For countless years, the rugged slopes and deep canyons of Mexico's Sierra Madre Mountains have been home to the Huichol Indians. Numbering less than 15,000, living in small villages of perhaps 100 people, they are said to be the last tribe in North America to have kept their pre-Columbian shamanic traditions. To them, shamanism is a way of life, a way of healing themselves and the natural world. The Huichos live in much the same way as their ancestors did, following the same ceremonial cycle and healing traditions. One of the most well-known shamans practicing in the Huichol tradition is an American, Brant Secunda. Traveling in Mexico 20 years ago in search of adventure, instead, he found a people of immense joy and inner peace, and the path of a shamanic healer. Brandt completed a 12-year apprenticeship with the renowned Huichol shaman Don Jose Matsua. Brandt became Don Jose's adopted grandson and close companion. He is the only non-Huichol to be acknowledged as a healer and ceremonial leader by the tribe. Several times each year, he returns to his adopted family to participate in the ceremonies and to perform healings. The Weechols have given me so much that it makes me very happy to be able to return to the village and use what my grandfather taught me to help heal the people. Tomasa, one of Don Jose's daughter-in-laws, had been sick for several months when they asked me to do this healing. She said that all her kupuri, her life force, was leaving her. With this Weechol feather wand, I travel into the Nerika, the doorway between the worlds to find the illness. A feather wand helps a Weichol shaman to see with the eyes of an eagle, to search for the illness and suck it out. He will also call on Kayumari, the deer spirit. He sends the deer into the patient's body to find out what is wrong. The deer is the one who actually does the healing. The Weichol say no human being can really heal, only the gods can. The same deer spirit is waiting in the shaman's throat to capture the illness, which is then given to the fire or the earth. My grandfather, Don Jose, began my training by telling me that a shaman's role is to help the people find balance in their lives through ceremony and with healing. <laughs> The life of the village goes on around us, people living on the altar of Mother Earth, growing their sacred corn the giver of life, chopping wood for the cooking fires, raising their chickens. And the people dream of the sun, of the earth, and of the gods and goddesses, the ancient ones who have given them life as they come together for the next ceremony. <laughs> Yeah.
para enseñar y enseñar. La pobla no atuche. Doña Josefa, Don Jose's wife and my grandmother, is 90 years old, also a shaman. Oh, ancient one, she calls out as her family prepares for the next ceremony. Bless our children, heal us. This is the prayer of the Wichos, to pray for the children, to pray that they have a long life. She offers my son Nicholas to the ancient ones. The Wichos have a saying, you are not judged to be rich by how much money you have, but by the number of your children. Don Jose is at least 110 years old and has devoted most of his life to being a shaman. Don Jose still does many healings, and people come great distances to ask his help. This is the work of Amara Akame, a shaman healer. Even though Don Jose can no longer hold his movietes or feather ones in his hand, he still has the power to heal. Here he turns his hand into a feather and uses it like a surgeon's scalpel to remove the illness and adjust the person's life force. The whole village is preparing for the ceremony of the first fruits, the drum and harvest ceremony held in September. They say it would be stealing the food, robbing Mother Earth to harvest their crops before giving thanks to the ancient ones. This is a ceremony for the entire village, but especially for the children. The mothers make colorful God's eyes as offerings for the health of the children and for good luck. They sit with their children in a special place in front of the altar. While the shamans greet each other, the grandmothers ready the food. Corn is made into tortillas and given life by being cooked over the open fire. Grandfather fire, they call. Give our food light and power. Give our bodies strength. The shamans begin by laying their taquatsis, their medicine baskets, on the altar. They take out their feather wands and circle around the fire. They pray to the ancient ones, the masculine and feminine spirits which bring life to the tribe. They pray to Grandfather Fire, the first shaman, to Grandmother Growth, the mother of creation. Oh, Grandfather Fire, we pray for our children. Open their hearts, purify them, heal our children, make them strong, teach them the sacred ways. We pray that the flowers of their hearts are open to the power and light of the ancient ones. We pray that you breathe the breath of life through them. We ask you this, Grandfather. We come before you as your children and ask you this. As the ceremony begins, the women lay their offerings on the altar of Mother Earth, praying for good luck for the children, offering food for the gods. While Grandfather Deertail, 
the messenger of the gods, watches over them. The men heat the drum to make it ready for the ceremony. Don Jose has always said that the Huichol way is for anyone who has a Huichol heart. When I put on my Huichol clothes and begin to drum, I feel honored to be a part of this beautiful tradition. Don Jose's son, my brother, Catarino, leads the ceremony. He's in his 50s, a shaman for many years. Doña Josefa makes sure everything is ready. In our tradition, husbands and wives walk the shamanic path together. Both help each other to complete their lives. Verarda, Catalino's wife, will help sing the chants as she sits in the sacred circle along with her extended family. The sacred kopal is offered to the gods. Oh, ancient ones, take our prayers to the sky. Bless our children, make them strong and beautiful. Let them see with the eyes of beauty. Grandmothers, grandfathers, give our children strength. We pray for our children. As I see my own son, Nicholas, being blessed, it brings joy to my heart that he, too, will be following the sacred path of the gods. The mothers are bringing up the children to be blessed by the drum, all those who have turned five in the past year. For the Huichols, five is a sacred number. It represents the four directions plus the fifth, our heart, our center. Through the drum, they take in the love of Mother Earth. The shamans transform the children into hummingbirds and take them through the nerika, the doorway of the heart, to all the sacred places of power they are too young to journey to in ordinary life. This is Tatsu, Don Jose's grandson, his youngest apprentice. In this tradition, even children of five can start training as shamans if they can see the spirits. When the hummingbird spirits of the children arrive at Tate Mateniere, the spring of Mother Earth, Dania Josefa blesses everyone with sacred water. Water is the milk of Mother Earth, the blood that runs through her veins, representing the feminine powers, the fertility of our hearts and spirits. As it rains on the people, it nourishes their lives and helps them grow strong. In ceremonies, the shamans invite the spirits to come into the sacred circle to celebrate life calling to them by singing. Originally, human beings could talk directly to the spirits, but they forgot how, and now they need the shamans. The Huicho see human beings as mirrors of the gods, or ancient ones, reflections of them, living here in the middle world, between the earth and sky. It is our responsibility to help maintain balance in the world, working with the Creator to make sure that the sun will always shine, that the rain will always fall. Shamans are the bridge between the worlds. In an unordinary heightened state of awareness, seeing with the eyes of the eagle, we beat the drum and it turns into the magical deer spirit, guiding the people through the Nerika, transporting them to many places of power. There are places of power throughout the Huichol Sierra, places where the ancient ones, the gods and goddesses of creation, transform themselves into beautiful mountains, caves, or springs to add power to the earth and so that human beings might be able to learn from them. We visit these sacred places during every ceremony to ask for their power. To us, they are still living spirits 
like Picacho, the mountain of sacred caves of vision quest and healing. <laughs> One of the most sacred places of all is Wirikuta, the land of the gods, the mountain where the sun was born, the center of the Wichol universe. When we sing our way there, our hearts are filled with love and peace and joy for all of creation. On this mythical journey, the people are happy when they arrive at this powerful spot, thanking the shamans with offerings of food, sharing the food with everyone. Because they work in the fields every day, they have a direct relationship with the natural world. To them, corn is sacred and represents the body, just as the magical deer represents the heart. Both must be fed, one by food, the other by love. They also have a great sense of humor. Once asked why the deer was their main spirit guide, Don Jose answered, do you see any elephants around here? After sharing the harvest, we start our journey home, bringing the people and children back from Wudikuta, bringing their hearts and spirits back from the sacred land. As the ceremony continues, my grandmother, Doña Josefa, does her first public healing. In the Huichol tradition, both men and women can become a shaman, a mara akami. Both may lead ceremonies and both may do healings. Their training is the same, although a woman might want to learn more from the feminine places of power, like the ocean. Tonya Josefa studied many years. I've seen her drum, chant, and lead ceremonies, but this is the first time she has done a healing on anyone outside her own family. There are two kinds of shamans, the healing shaman and the singing shaman. The healing shaman is like a doctor and the singing shaman does ceremonies for the well-being of the earth and the people. They taught me that healing is a way of life, something to be practiced constantly, not just when we are ill. To be in balance, to stay well, we must consciously make contact with all life, see our life in all things so that life and health are embedded within our hearts. <coughs> in this context, illness is seen as an opportunity to find out what you might be doing wrong in your life, a chance to get well. We believe that we must heal our heart and spirit at the same time that we heal our body. That is why the Wichos call themselves Veradika, the healing people. If illness does come, they turn to the shaman for healing, both in ceremony and for private healings. Once a shaman begins to heal, she is judged by her success. Doña Josefa is already known as a powerful shaman. The Wichos shamans think long and hard about doing healings. Once you become known as a healer, your life is no longer your own. You belong to the community and must use your skills to help all those who come with you. Catarino captures the spirit of the drum with his feathers, giving it to me to help me in my healing work. What I didn't know at that moment was how quickly I would need to call upon that power. During the last part of the ceremony, Don Jose suddenly collapses. There are no signs of life. Do something. Heal his head, Doña Josefa calls to me. Normally, I don't get up from this chair during a ceremony, 
but I jump up, take my feathers and call on Grandfather Fire to help me heal my grandfather. I don't know if I will be able to bring him back. We never know if our healings will work. It's up to the gods and the deer. The people are crying for him all around me. I don't know if he will live or die. Grandmother Eagle, breathe the breath of life back into my grandfather. Breathe the breath of life, the wind, into his heart so that he may walk upon your altar, Mother Earth, again. It seems like hours, but 15 minutes later his eyes begin to focus and he begins to talk. The spirits have listened. My grandfather is alive. The ceremony can continue. Doña Josefa prays to grandmother growth. Mother of all the gods, the force that makes things grow. She lives in the sky with her long gray hair in a net. When she lets down that net, the rains fall to nourish the earth. When the huichols shake their gourd rattles, they hear the voice of her spirit awakening their visions. At the end of the day, Don Jose is himself again, blessing my son Nicholas. As I watch, I remember how Catarino and I used to sit by Don Jose's side as he led the drum and harvest ceremony. I remember how I first found the Huichols. I met a Huichol school teacher in Ixtlan, Mexico, and he gave me an introduction to his village, told me it was a five-day walk. On the third day, I ran out of food and water and lay down to die. I had visions of circles filled with light and deer-like animals and was awakened suddenly by Indians laughing, telling me that the old shaman of their village had had a dream I would be at that spot, that they would rescue me. Soon after, I was taken to the village of Don Jose. He too had had a dream, a vision that he would teach me to help carry on the Huichol tradition. He adopted me and trained me in a 12-year apprenticeship. And that's how I came to learn this beautiful tradition. I can remember how it felt to be an apprentice, to struggle to learn, to feel Don Jose's power and love, to talk and laugh together with him each day, to learn to lead ceremonies and pilgrimages to places of power, to the mountains, and the ocean, to Wirikuta, the land of the gods, the high desert country, the mountain where the sun was born. Each year, in the dry season, Small family groups make their annual 300-mile pilgrimage to Wirikuta, the land of the gods, the mountain where the sun was born, in the high desert of northern Mexico. The Huichols consider this trip the most joyous event in their lives. They are visiting the land where the gods were born. To them, this barren desert is paradise. The 
first stop on our journey is Haiki Tiene, the entranceway to Wirikuta, the gateway of power, the place of the cloud spirits. We give these spirits parrot feathers as an offering. We use our feather wands to open up the gates of power to protect the people who have come to pray. Don Jose and I have traveled together on this sacred journey 12 times. The shaman captures the power of this place and gives it to the people. Our medicine baskets are open. Our offerings are ready as we make our second stop, Tate Mantinieri, the spring of our sacred mother, the original source of fresh water in this windblown land. When the ancient ones made the first pilgrimage, there was no water. So a young goddess transformed herself into the sacred spring so they could all drink. Following this tradition, many of us do not drink water until we reach this spring. We pray that we can take these waters, this feminine goddess, into our hearts, into our lives. We give thanks that our objects can be blessed by her so we can use them in a good way for healing and singing. When we go on a pilgrimage, we all go as one heart. We leave all our problems behind. Each place we visit, we leave an offering or a prayer arrow, making a wish for our lives, exchanging power with the spirit of that place. We take that power into our feather wands to help us learn a little more each day and to help the people. Caterino dips his feathers in the sacred spring to pray for his daughter, Esperanza. Tati Matanieri, he prays, give my daughter the water of life. We offer you the light of the fire. Spring of our sacred mother, give my daughter your power so that she may find her life. Esperanza is eight years old. This is her first pilgrimage. She has already made a shaman's commitment to return five more times. O oh, Tate Mantinieri, accept our offerings. We ask that we can take your power. We have gone without water, like the gods who came here before us. We journey here as gods to find our lives, to remember who it is that we are. Bathe us with your healing water. Heal our hearts. This is what we say this good day. Many of us still fast for five days on this journey. We leave our humanness behind and go as the gods went. It helps remind us that we are a reflection of these ancient ones, that our lives are sacred. Tonight we prepare to enter Wirikuta. Grandfather Fire led the gods on the first pilgrimage. Our grandfather, Don Jose, leads us in the same way. Arriving at Wirikuta, at the mountain where the sun was born, we prepare our sacred circle. We have come to pray for our lives, to pray for everything that is, our past, our present, and our future. Oh, Father, Son, we pray to you. Just as you took the ancient ones to this place, we return now. Following this way to your place of power, we leave our offerings. Oh, Mother Earth, it makes us happy to arrive at this sacred place. We've arrived at the Holy Land. We've come here together. Thank you. That we can come back here makes our hearts happy. We pray for beautiful vision. We sing, we dance. Eligio paints his violin with the dye of a root that grows in the desert. 
He is a shaman and a yarn painting artist. He paints his visions, his dreams. He paints them so that all may see. When night comes, we dance like the deer, hoping to bring vision to our lives. Grandfather Fire talks to us throughout the night and gives us his wisdom. All the ancient ones of this place speak to us in our dreams. Those who can dance until dawn, celebrating their lives. We greet the morning spirits, saying goodbye to this powerful place. Oh, ancient ones, we call out to you. We call to you to give thanks. Here we are at your holy place, and now we return to our homes. We give thanks that you've allowed us to come to this sacred place. If we are alive next year, we will return. When we pray, we pray aloud, as if our lives depended on it. Our prayers wake up the gods, and they pay attention. They have no choice. They can't turn away if someone prays with good intentions. We say that the dear spirit is praying through us, that he whispers the prayers in our ears. As human beings, it's our responsibility to pray, not just for ourselves and our family, but for the earth, the four seasons, and the gods. Don Jose says it takes nine years to learn to pray well. Tired but joyous at completing their journey, the pilgrims return home, announcing their return not only to the village, but to the spirits of the land and to the four directions. They greet the fire, which has been kept burning continuously for the entire time they have been away a beacon to guide them home, where they continue the ceremonial cycle. While only a few huichols become shamans, lead ceremonies and heal, the entire community follows the shamanic path. To the Huichols, shamanism is not just a group of myths or a few ceremonies during the year. It is a way of life. They pray to the fire every morning. They pray for good visions each evening. They look for ways to help balance the world every day. They take strength from Mother Earth, 
wisdom from the fire, love from the gods and goddesses. They are consciously connected to the natural world, each other, all creation and they acknowledge their responsibilities as human beings living on the earth. This is one of my favorite times, just lying in the shade with my grandfather, remembering our adventures, telling stories, teasing each other over and over again. The Wichos laugh more than any other people I know. Happiness and sadness are the same thing, they say. Only happiness makes you feel better. I remember Don Jose saying, nothing I've taught you is worth anything if you leave here and can't tell a good joke. Preparing this corn husk arrow to pray for good crops, the men will offer it to the fire and pray that the smoke will rise into the sky, turn into clouds, and come back as rain. They will pray that grandmother growth help make it so. As everyone rests from the journey, the shamans go to work again, holding their feather wands up to the sky to catch the spirits of Wirikuta, bringing them back to their families, giving everyone in the village the power of that sacred place. For when a huicho goes on a pilgrimage, He's not only going for himself, but for the entire community. No one stands alone in this tradition. Now, go tell Taiwan, you're